Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to call to order the Anderson Township Zoning Commission meeting of Monday, November the 25th. Uh, we have four items on the agenda. First item, approval of the agenda. Could get a motion on that. I make a motion. Thank you, Harry. Second. I second. Thank you. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Second item is approval of the minutes from the last meeting, October. I know that we have three, four of us here that were present on October. Uh, these were mailed out ahead. Same question, any uh, questions, concerns, additions, modifications? If not, no, I'll take a motion. a motion. I make a motion that the minutes be approved by the four. Thank you, Harry. Second? I'll second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Thank you. Got an abstention? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, the third item is case 4-213, land use plan, the adoption of design guidelines. Uh, these guidelines uh, focus on standards for non-residential site design, also landscaping, lighting, et cetera, in the township. Uh, Paul, you're up. The applicant is Mr. C. Severs on behalf of the Anderson Township Board of um, Township Trustees. And again, the request is for a review and a recommendation of the Anderson Township design guidelines. As far as the history, the adoption or the initiation of the adoption process um, was initiated by the Board of Township Trustees on October the 19th. A um, little bit of a, a background. The design guidelines are guided to um, guide the appearance and form of new construction and redevelopment of commercial property in the township. So the design guidelines apply to all um, non-residential zoning districts. It, this was recommended in several or many of the recent planning efforts of the township, including recommendations from the Anderson Plan, the Township's Comprehensive Plan, the Riverfront Plan, the Beachmont Vision Plan, the Clough Pike Historic District Plan, and the Salem Road Business District Study, and um, a pending, uh, uh, well, there's a draft of the Anchor Plan that also recommends design guidelines. This became an initiative of the Township's Economic Development Committee in late 2011, and this, again, was to improve the quality of development throughout the non-residential areas of the Township. Um, they met throughout 2012. There was a photo inventory conducted of, of what the committee liked and what disliked throughout the township. And these um, images and the draft plans were taken to the businesses, um, a direct mailing to all the businesses, and then many meetings were held throughout the community to review the draft guidelines. So again, as far as the objectives of the design guidelines, it's to assist in the plan and design of quality development in the township. It's pr to protect property and private investment. Um, it's to encourage viable and compatible mix of uses. It's to encourage creative planning and design. And it's to make policy of efficient traffic flow subordinate to the policy of promoting an attractive and viable pedestrian friendly environment. It's also to avoid piecemeal and fragmented development. Um, along commercial corridors and to promote the public health, safety, and welfare. There are five sections that are addressed in the design guidelines. Um, those are on, on the slide in more detail found in, in the draft that's been posted on our website. Um, but number one, site planning. Number two, architecture. Number three, landscaping. Number four, lighting. And five, signage. And the guidelines um, speak to looking at development, surrounding development, if, so if a proposed um, site, for instance, on Beachmont Avenue were to come before this um, zoning commission for review, the idea is to look at the surrounding development, to look at the adopted plans of the township, such as the Beachmont Corridor and Vision Plan, or if it's off of Beachmont Avenue, say in the Ohio Riverfront area, to look at specific uh, recommendations from those plans and it gives you a tool as a zoning commission and um, the other you know, approving bodies that may review a proposal, gives them a guideline um, of whether this is within the uh, recommendations of those adopted plans. As far as the applicability of standards, it is a guideline and it's not mandatory standards. So how that will work is that there will be a reference in the township zoning resolution 
It would be one more tool for any approving body, again, whether it's the Zoning Commission, the Board of Zoning Appeals, the Township Trustees, and even staff uh, when reviewing, you know, uh, applications. It gives us guidance to developers, um, but they're not mandatory standards, however, they are recommendations. Um, and again, they were developed based on existing materials, um, our zoning res resolution plans that are adopted and current property configurations of the township's business districts. Um, and again, it's the intention to accompany adopted plans and guide new developments and site redevelopments. Um, and again, only for commercial areas and non-residential. So uh, that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions of me, if not, I think Mr. Sievers would also like to say a few words on behalf of the Economic Development Committee. Let's first go down to the Zoning Commission. We all had these uh, from yeah, at least a month now, yeah. passed out last month. Questions, remarks? Um, None on my behalf, thank you. Well, the only remark that I have is I think this is fantastic. <clears throat> this goes all the way back to 84. I think we had the first meeting on the Beachmont plan and Jerry Groves brought up the idea that we ought to do something for the whole town shop, the whole township, and not just for Beachmont. So I just wanted to throw his name in there because I think a lot of this, he and Dottie Scott started a lot of this. Good. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. No question. Just a comment uh, from a consistency standpoint. Uh, although these are guidelines, I can remember from time to time, particularly up on Beachmont Avenue, uh, I recall the LA Fitness Project um, that seems like we had two or three meetings to, to come to a firm agreement that there were certain design requirements that I think the Zoning Commission was looking for. Um, and we talked about them once, we talked about them twice, may even have talked about them a third time. And I just am um, pleased to see the progress that's been made, the process that's been followed. So with that, uh, Mr. Sievers, remarks? Thank you again. Uh, Steve Sievers, uh, Assistant Administrator for Anderson Township on behalf of the Board of Township Trustees. Uh, I think Mr. Drury did a great job providing an overview. I don't want to go into too much more detail unless there's questions or questions would come up from the public that I could help to address. Uh, I will note that it, Paul mentioned the, the nine meetings that were held. A lot of those were uh, piggybacked on other business district meetings. We made a concerted effort to be out in the business community to get feedback. Again, this was a project that was driven by our Economic Development Committee, so it was business driven, which is not too uh, common. Oftentimes it's government driven, so I appreciate that. We have a couple members here tonight. Uh, Paul Kitzmiller, who was at that time the chair of our Economic Development Committee, and Josh Gerth, who both were part of that effort as well. Um, again, we not only had the means out in the public, we had this on our website. Uh, we made a concerted effort through the newsletter and through other means to let folks know what we were looking at. And again, I think you hit the nail on the head, Mr. Van Sant. It was response to a lot of the questions we had as to what we want to see with development. And it's a hope that it would be used by this board, by the Board of Trustees, by the, the Board of Zoning Appeals to standardize so that everybody knows from square one what we're looking at. And there's not this back and forth question about what we should we do here. And we focus on architecture, but it goes beyond that. I think the intent of this is to look beyond just the site in question, look at the surrounding area and how the site's being developed in concert with that area. So um, again, appreciate your all's opportunity, a chance to take a look at this. If there's any questions, I'm happy to, to answer those at this time. Questions for Mr. Sievers? No? Thanks. Right, thank you. This time we're going to open it up to the floor if there's anyone like to comment or make questions about the design plan guidelines. If so, please state your name and we'll I'd like to make a listen. Once, twice. <laughs> All right. Uh, hearing nothing, um, I'll go ahead and I'd like entertain to make a, a motion. motion that these uh, recommendations be forwarded to the Board of uh, Trustees. Thank you, Harry. Second? I second. I got second. Ms. Cook, roll call. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, item four, case one dash, 2013 PD. It's a planned unit development request fired by Josh Allen with Core Resources for Gilbert Avenue Associates, LLC, in 99.90 LLC part property owners. Um, this is a plan unit development. So I'm going to read into the record uh, kind of an outline of how we're going to proceed tonight. So if you'll just uh, uh, bear with me a minute. Um, because this is a quasi-judicial proceeding, this plan unit development, 
Uh, the commission will only receive evidence as to whether the application meets or does not meet the standards and criteria in the zoning resolution. We do not want to hear opinions, just the facts. And as, or I'm sorry, start over. As a result, all persons presenting testimony before the commission, whether for or against this case or this applicant's position, may only do so after being sworn in and being subject to cross-examination. The staff will present a summary of the application. The applicant will then present its case. The board members may ask questions of the staff, anyone who speaks on behalf of the applicant. If an attorney presents the case for the applicant, the attorney is not sworn in and is not considered to be a witness. As a result, the attorney's statements are not considered as evidence. Evidence only comes in through the witnesses who testified before this commission after being sworn in. The burden is on the applicant to present evidence that the application satisfies the standards and criteria for approval. After the applicant presents its case through its witnesses, all persons in the audience supporting the application will be permitted to testify one at a time after being recognized by the chair. When all persons supporting the application are finished, those opposed to the application will then be permitted to testify after being recognized by the chair. If anyone in opposition is represented by attorney, that party will go first, followed by any members of the audience. As stated previously, anybody wishing to testify tonight, whether for or against this application, may only do so after being sworn in. When testifying, each person from the audience must come forward to the podium after being recognized, speak into the microphone, and state their name, address, and any affiliation to the case. All persons testifying will be limited to four minutes unless a commission member requests that they be given additional time. All testimony is directed to the commission only. No comments or questions are to be directed to the applicant or anyone else in the audience. The commission will only hear new, non-repetitive evidence or questions. Should someone wish to show support of previous testimony, they may do so by following the testimony procedures and stating their support of the previous testimony. So at this time, uh, if anyone in the audience um, may be uh, providing testimony tonight to this case, uh, we please stand and raise your right hand. So anybody that's going to testify to the case tonight, please raise your hand. Stand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Any questions from the commission at this time? No. Thank you. At this time, uh, the applicant, uh, the applicant's representative, uh, please come forward. We'll do the staff report first. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, this is case one, 2013 PUD, Plan Unit Development. The applicant is Josh Allen on behalf of Core Resources. For the property owners who are Gilbert Avenue Associates, LLC, and 9990 LLC. The location is at 7719, 7925, and 7933 Beachmont Avenue, and all these properties are zoned E retail. So, and these are the properties here. Um, on Cages, the addresses are out of range for some reason, so we've been identifying the properties by their parcel numbers. This is the formal, former ATIS, this is the former Lon John Silvers, and this is currently um, an auto dealer. This is the aerial. Again, this is Beachmont Avenue. And this is Witt Road. Again, I think it's Cincinnati used auto. Um, the former Lon John Silvers and the ATIS. This is Jamestown uh, Village Condominiums. Monroe Muffler and Kinder Care. And back to this slide, the red identifies an area that's zoned E retail. The brownish or orangish color is planned multifamily. And the yellow is uh, single family residence. So as far as the proposed development, the applicant is proposing a new 5,000 square foot salon, which is this building here, and a 3,570 square foot restaurant uh, with parking, landscaping, and lighting. 123 spaces are proposed. The applicant's proposing to consolidate all of the entrances and exits or the curb cuts on Beachmont Avenue into one main entrance into the, into the property, as well as one entrance off of Whit Road. 
Currently, there's uh, an entrance to Aedis uh, and in and in out for the former Long John Silvers, and there's an entrance off of Wit for the car dealer. This is the uh, proposed landscape plan and proposed elevation drawings. This is the elevation drawing of the proposed salon. The elevation drawing of the proposed restaurant, which would, which would sit on the corner. This would is a proposed elevation facing Beachmont Avenue, and this is the elevation uh, proposed for uh, Whit Road. We'll just go through some site photos real quick. This is the uh, former Adis. This is standing on Beachmont, looking at you know toward the uh, toward the south. This wall here is the current Johnny's Car Wash. It's adjacent. This is looking at the other direction, looking north across the street at the shopping center. And again, this is looking east on Beachmont Avenue. This is looking at the former Long John Silvers that uh, seasonally is used for plant place um, for nursery sales during the summer. And uh, they do have some fall sales and currently Christmas tree sales. Again, looking in all directions at, at the former Long John Silvers. And then this is looking at the uh, corner property, Cincinnati Auto Credit. I misspoke earlier. Cincinnati Auto Credit. It's a used car dealer. Um, again, looking to the north, across the street is owned uh, retail. This is Cobo Banker, West Shell, and Chevy at Savings. Um, again, just different perspectives. So as far as history on this site, um, the Aedis Sports Bar closed earlier this year in 2013. The former Long John Silver site closed in 2004. And again, it's just been used for temporary sales since that time. And again, the corner property is currently occupied by Cincinnati Auto Credit. So this is being treated as a plan unit development reviewed by the Zoning Commission because the proposed impervious surface is greater than 60%. The proposed uh, impervious surface ratio is 84.5. So therefore, that does trigger a review by the Zoning Commission. Um, with the PUD review, we look at several items. The first is zoning compliance. There are three areas uh, that the proposed plan does not meet the, the regulations um, for zoning and variances are, are thus requested. One is that the request for variance from section 144A4 for a parking lot setback of two feet and two and a half inches from the right of way width, which is over in this general area here. The requirement for zoning is that there be a 10 foot streetscape buffer from the right of way, and this dashed dark line is the right of way, and there's a proposed setback of only two feet, two and a half inches. The second variance is uh, there's an optimum. Uh, number of parking spaces that is permitted per the zoning re resolution. The optimum number is uh, or t optimum number plus 10 percent is 119, which would be permitted as of right. And the applicants are proposing 123 spaces, so the variance is requested from that. And the second item, or I'm sorry, the third item is for two freestanding signs for the premise. When a premise such as this is developed and is unified, even though it's two separate parcels, only one sign is permitted per 400 feet of road frontage. And um, this development is shy of 400 feet. However, um, they are proposing two freestanding signs, one at each corner on Beachmont Avenue. As far as the applicable plans that were used to evaluate this request, the Township's Comprehensive Plan, the Anderson Plan, the application is consistent with the goals and objectives of the plan, including economic development, land use, um, which are in your staff report. The Anderson Trails Plan calls for pedestrian accessibility to the site. And there is a sidewalk proposed along the Beachmont Avenue frontage, also along the Whit frontage to their property line. There's also pedestrian connections to the condominiums south, um, tying into an existing sidewalk that runs along the northern um, property line of the condominiums that are adjacent. So the application is consistent with the trails plan. With the corridor plan, the corridor plan calls for consolidation of driveways as well as cross access to joining properties. And as we stated before, the, the proposal is to have one access off of Beachmont Avenue and one access off of Witt. There is a provision as well for 
a cross access connection to property to the east um, should the property I'm sorry to the west should the property to the west um, request a connection so um, there is a provision for cross access and then as far as the Beachmont vision plan goes this site is located in neighborhood three of the Beachmont vision plan mixed uses are highly encouraged um, it's encouraged that buildings are 10 to 15 feet from the street as well as two-story or massing equivalent of two stories these are not within that 10 to 15 feet however every effort has been made to at least have only one row of parking in the front versus the two rows and have the building set back 30 feet or more so there was an attempt to move the buildings closer um, to the street these buildings are also in line with some of the existing structures in that immediate neighborhood such okay. as the car wash next door and also with Monroe muffler on the other side of wit as far as the massing for two two-story structures um, this building is, is 24 feet in height, which is consistent with the recently approved Firestone across the street, which also has a two-story appearance. So the heights of the buildings are consistent with new development in, in the neighborhood. Um, and, and back to the elevation drawings. So one, one of the comments in the um, staff report was the elevation on WIT because they're half a, with the proposed structure half of the structure is in windows and awnings and this um, the other half of the structure is not with different colored bricks so it was raised in the staff summary of why not carrying those windows and awnings um, in that style on the facade of Whit Road if you look um, at Beachmont again the elevations are consistent with the vision plan there's a mix of building materials there are awnings a mixture of lighting materials or lights um, and a front appearance same way with sal uh, the salon and then finally there are two items um, that are brought up in the recommendation in the staff report uh, one is that the proposed dumpster location for the restaurant is adjacent to the residential areas so it suggested staff is suggesting that that be moved away um, from the residential area not sure exactly where is the best and most appropriate place for that but we feel that it should be located somewhere other than adjacent to the residential um, the dumpster enclosure for the salon is located up closer to the building so um, that was one item one item for the variance along with on the landscaping plan you'll see that the landscaping is identified in the right-of-way and the county engineer generally frowns with landscaping in the right-of-way so one thing that was we suggested in the staff report was instead of having this row of parking parallel with wit perhaps an alternative would be to have it parallel with the actual building which would free up at least a, a little wedge for landscaping along with um, I think those are some of the items of concern so as far as staff's recommendation so I was recommending approval um, and you can see the reasons of why we feel that it's um, compliant with township adopted plans I won't read through those um, but you'll see them in the staff report as well for the variances again there are three variances under consideration one is for the parking setback along with and we just currently address that we we feel that a setback is, is warranted on the northern corner of the parking lot because of the angle of wit and the angle of the site um, however we do feel that there should be some discussion about the entire um, width of, of wit because it does if a setback of two and two and a half inches is permitted there will be little if any landscaping that would be in that two feet um, as far as the section 145 the number of spaces over the optimum um, staff was felt that that should be considered uh, for approval for the reasons in the staff report and again for the two freestanding signs uh, where one is permitted uh, staff felt that that was uh, should be considered as well so I'll be happy to answer any questions okay <clears throat> thank you Paul a question to the time of the staff uh, a few questions Paul did we receive any information on the proposed monument signs uh, not yet I did I did speak with the applicant today so he may have new information for you tonight okay. and then the dumpster enclosures 
on the plan mark say matching the building but on the elevations they call for split face CMU has there been any discussions of which they want to propose I no, I we haven't okay. had that discussion and the information about the easement to Johnny's that's only if Johnny's request the easement or that's something you're but recommending the standard um, in, in previous PUD cases or plan districts the Zoning Commission has generally place a condition that an easement be made available when or if the adjoining property wants to tie into it so if the property would would like to tie into it now uh, with the current operation as a car wash the condition would be made that, that this property owner allow that to happen and then if, in the future if that property is to redevelop Giants car wash if it were to redevelop that, that cross easement access be ava made ava available very similar to some of the other redevelopment along Beachmont Avenue. Yeah, just is the applicant willing to uh, grant it through? It's shown on the plans that yes, they are open okay. to that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Other questions? No. Okay. This time, will the applicant's representative come forward to the podium and? Uh, present the case. Remember, we need your name, address, and any affiliation with the case. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dave Kitzmiller. I'm with Core Resources, 1404 Vine Street, Cincinnati 45202. Go ahead, sir. Great. Thank you. Paul did a great job of, of describing the project, and uh, I'd be glad to answer any further questions that you might have, uh, just in terms of some that uh, that you raised uh, in terms of the signage um, I, I don't have specifics regarding what the monument signage would be but in talking with Paul we know there's so many so many square footage allowed per frontage of the properties uh, and we'll have to treat you know each retailer uh, equally even though they have different frontages um, so th that's what we would propose to do and we could submit drawings uh, at a later date in terms of what the specific uh, signs would be in sizes and so forth okay. So you're proposing that monument signs would meet the requirements under the zoning code? Correct. Okay. And you're proposing the monument sign to be one per tenant or a sign for both tenants on each end? One per tenant. So one, one for the restaurant at the intersection of Beachmont and Witt, then the other one would be at the, the west end of the site for, uh, for the salon. Uh, in, in terms of uh, the uh, the setback area off of Whit Road, uh, the two and a half feet that's there now, and talking with Paul, uh, you know, we'd certainly be willing to kind of shift that row of parking over and make it parallel with the building, uh, and we would do so to maintain a 24-foot drive aisle. So that'll open up a triangle shape that we can landscape for however big it is. You know, just in, in trying to eyeball it without you know, didn't have time to, to re-engineer it, but I thought we felt maybe the base of that could be five to six feet wide and then kind of narrowed down from there and we can, you know, get as much planning in there as we can. We would certainly be willing to do there. Uh, and then uh, in terms of the dumpster, uh, I understand the commentary regarding the dumpster, uh, but it, it does provide uh, a bit of a challenge to relocate it. Uh, you know, we felt with the way it was screened, uh, with the way it was landscaped, uh, that it did hide it uh, as much as we possibly can. But in order to maintain, uh, you know, the drive aisles and the circulation throughout the project, that was the best place for it to be. Is there any way you could move that further under the, um, you know, I, I'd, I'd hate to live back there and have that dumpster there. I mean, you know, just being honest with you, is there any way you could move that to, um, if you look at the picture that's on the screen now, I guess to our left, and get it closer to the property line, and uh, what that would do is that would kind of I guess it really would make a lot of difference, but I'm just talking, sorry. Yeah, you could shift it. I mean, there's those yeah. three parking spots there. You could shift it over to that corner. Um, the, it would not have any impact on the parking. Right, but um, I mean, it wouldn't also have any thing to do with the people in the back either I'm just yeah not a material change because right. it's right now it's somewhat in the middle of if you look at that the line uh, which shows the one line of the condo project it would just shift a little bit more to the west
I do see that you're, you you cut the curb cuts down, which are great. Correct. We did reduce uh, one at least uh, at least two, maybe more uh, than that curb cuts on Beachmont, which we certainly understand is uh, is a big issue, and obviously agree with it in terms of promoting the safety of of the ingress and egress. So we feel that with the circulation that we have and the curb cuts that are proposed, uh, that it provides you know adequate ingress egress. Uh, in terms of the future connection, uh, we've noted where that, you know, the best place for that future connection to be to the car wash property. Uh, we're certainly open to uh, providing that. Just want to make sure that, you know, everything is balanced equal for both parties uh, on those access easements. Do you have any idea when this, uh, you know, if we give an approval on this and it goes through uh, when you're going to get started? Any ideas? Uh, we I mean, were are you looking for a start, middle, end date yet, or I mean, is it we, we that far along? And you're uh, we're negotiating with both tenants right now, and uh, we would anticipate construction starting in first quarter of 2014. Okay. And we'd love to have both of them open mid-year, you know, late second, maybe early third quarter 2014. <coughs> okay. Other questions? Yeah, I have a few. Go ahead. Um, I know we, I think everybody's asked a question about the signs. We're very sensitive about signage, obviously. Yeah. Um, is it a static or an LED sign? Is it a static sign or is it planned to be an LED board type uh, of At sign? this point, there's no plans for it to be an LED board. Just an LED, just a static sign? Static sign, okay. correct. Okay. Um, the, what, I know, I know you mentioned both tenants or the proposed tenants. Are the hours of operation approximately? Um, the salon, uh, uh, 10 to 7 roughly, maybe a little bit later. Uh, restaurant, uh, probably 10 to 9. I could be off on that a bit, but not too far off. Okay. Perfect. 9 in the evening? For the restaurant? 10. Okay. Any questions? Coyote, well, yeah, but you go to Coyote, you're still there at 11. Yeah, we'd have to. We can. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious more in be. terms of because of the parking, the amount of parking spaces, and the competing hours of business and stuff. So I was just curious on that. I, I mean, I understand it's not exact, but um, the other question I had was um, the privacy fence along the uh, south end. Um, I see as a four-foot height. Was there any talk or discussion about raising that higher than four feet, or would you be open to that? Uh, to my knowledge, there was no discussion uh, with it being taller than that. Uh, it was my understanding that the four foot met the requirement okay. uh, of the fence. I understand. Um, and then the, the actual materials used on that fence, too. Is there uh, any flexibility on the finishes of that that would be different than white plastic? Sorry. We would certainly consider something in keeping with, uh, with the neighborhood. Okay. Okay. All right. That's it. Everybody else good? Thank you, Mr. Kitzmiller. Um, we also sworn one other individual for the applicant. So your name, address, and affiliation? I'm Paul Kitzmiller, um, 1404 Vine Street. Um, I'm David's younger brother, uh, <laughs> co-owner of CORE uh, and CEO. Um, a little background on the site. Uh, David and I have owned the Long John Silver site for a little over nine years. Um, when we purchased it, we certainly didn't intend on owning it for nine years. Um, what we realized were um, in the construction and development business, uh, we probably misjudged how good that site was when we bought it in that it's mid-block. And um, over that nine-year period of time, we have worked diligently with local and national retailers. And so uh, we have thrown about as much spaghetti at that site as anyone can. Uh, the site was a little small. Um, so when uh, uh, we early on tried to approach ATIS and we early on tried to approach the car dealer and we were met with much resistance uh, and their prices were unrealistic. So um, uh, then the great recession came and nobody was developing, and I guess to somewhat our benefit, 
um, the prices were reset and ATIS and the car dealer uh, were a little more open to uh, a realistic price. Uh, we knew that we had a better chance and opportunity for development by acquiring all three. And um, I don't know how many of you are Anderson residents, but David and I have lived here all of our lives. And uh, we knew that if we could capture all three parcels, it would be a great opportunity to further clean up the township. Um, as Steve mentioned, I've chaired economic development for a number of years. Um, and um, I did drive the initiative for the architectural controls within our community because 25 years from now, uh, I have a strong desire for Beachmont Avenue not to look like it currently looks. So um, this redevelopment is very important to us as a resident of the township. I think it's evidenced by the development we did on the strip center where First Watch and Izzy's is. Um, you know, it didn't have to look like that. We spent additional dollars of our own money to make it look um, architecturally pleasing that we would be proud of living in the community. So when you ask what does that monument sign look like, uh, we tried to set a standard at that development for what we wanted future monument signs to look like. So the architectural aesthetics of the development are, are certainly very important to us. Um, once we captured this, um, we uh, had s several retailers that were interested. And um, uh, these were the best options we felt in terms of the site in terms of uh, amenities to the township. And I want to applaud Paul uh, for the time that he afforded us. And, you know, this is probably our 15th revision of these, these plans, trying to make it work with the uh, trails, um, the parking, uh, the curb cuts, the setbacks. Um, we, we put a significant amount of thought to that. Um, the parking is a, um, is a real issue. Uh, the two tenants wanted more, and you know, we pressed the envelope as to what we could truly get. Uh, we had to maintain access for the easement, which uh, we fully embrace. That, you know, that's, a, that's a great initiative for the township. Um, in terms of the dumpster location, it, really when you consider other locations, it's really the best location for that dumpster. And in terms of a split face or some type of masonry, we would most certainly match the building material um, of the restaurant. Um, that's a given. You know, in terms of the four foot fence, Rob, uh, I'd love to see it out of landscaping, frankly. And, you know, to go higher landscaping than four foot, I'm certainly not opposed to. But personally, I would rather take landscaping grain over some type of hard structure. I think it's probably softer for the community. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to touch on the windows that staff is recommending. Um, I, I would be cautious of that. The reason um, being, that's the back of the house. That's the kitchen component. That's why we didn't put windows there. And so, you know, internally, windows don't work for a kitchen. Uh, externally, we wanted to try to have some architectural consistency. And we're thinking of some type of glazed tile or glazed brick. So I, I think it would be very attractive. but. That's one opinion. But that's why we took that approach with the windows. Questions? Questions? No. Just, just one. <clears throat> On the matter of that, uh, that dumpster, would there be some maybe time limitations that would be acceptable to prevent that thing from banging around late at night or early in the morning so close to that adjacent residential structure? If it was left in place? I think the things we're concerned about are odor and noise. Uh, those types of things? Um, I would say yes. Okay. Um, the reality of that is probably the next thing you have to think about. You're, you're dealing with restaurant staff, and yep. you know, if, that, if that's a requirement and that's mandated, they, they need to live by it, but um, something that's reasonable. Right. Questions? I think on that point, the, the service whoever's providing the unloading service probably doesn't have a lot of flexibility in their time frames, yeah. which is well, we, gonna generate the most noise. Yeah, because they, 
Well, we've asked that before, <clears throat> and uh, other people have gone along with that. You know, that it can't be picked up after, help me out here, Paul. I mean, yeah, we've done that, you know, they can't uh, do it before seven or, you know, the, the, the rookies of the world, you know. I, they, you know. I would certainly think the, the pickup could be managed to right. acceptable hours. Is there any possibility of moving it up in this general vicinity? You know. Or in this area to get it away from the back row in this general area. That way it would be very so convenient to the back doors of the restaurant, the service area. You could completely enclose it so it wouldn't be unattractive to the opening of the restaurant. Is, here you're dealing with about 18 feet wide and the length of a parking spot is 19 feet um, so yeah I, I, I would tell you we've had significant discussions with the retailers and uh, I think that could be a real problem for the retailers you know, what we've tried to do is tuck it. You, you know, again, you could put the backside of that Arbavita. You could, you know, we've got, it's surrounded by landscape islands. You know, it's surrounded by brick enclosure. Yeah. I mean, okay. and then behind that, you have a, a fence or landscape structure. So it's, it's pretty well tucked in there. I think, I think you're getting it certainly closer to the retailers and closer to their customers by your suggestion, Paul. Other questions? This time? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. When I swore in witnesses to testify earlier, I don't recall there was anybody else in the room that stood. Is that correct, that wanted to testify? Okay. Seeing no additional witnesses, If there's no objection from the commission, I think at this time we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, we can deliberate on the facts that we've been presented. Uh, do we need a motion to close the public hearing? Yes, please. Yep. So we take a motion to close the public hearing. Harry, thank you. Rob, a second. second. Roll call. Mr. Gothard? Yes. Mr. Kennard? Yes. Mr. Heskamp? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. So in this case, being a PUD, the commission has the option of making a decision tonight or um, I guess convening at another time to make a decision. I think it's been our practice always to make decisions the night of the events unless we have other issues that uh, we wanted to, to, to discuss. So uh, with that, I'll open it up to the zoning commission members to make comments uh, regarding the case. Okay. Start in the end. I mean, I, I believe we are in a position to make a recommendation tonight um, based on staff's comments. The one things I would like to see is that the monument sign be brought back to the commission for final approval. Um, maybe with the, the testimony we heard tonight, a final landscape plan actually be brought back too, because it sounds like that's in a state of flux. But other than that, I think I'm in a position to make a decision tonight. Okay. Rob? Yeah, I, I share his, uh, his, uh, his opinion. I don't have any major objections to it uh, based on how it's written with the uh, variances. Um, I just wanted to bring it up to the rest of the commission. About, I mean, I'm asked a question about the fence height and the type of fence and materials. Does anyone else share that concern? Or, yes. I mean, I, I'm just thinking it looks like it's going to stand out like a sore thumb with a you know, white vinyl fence in the back, along that back of that development. It's going to conflict with everything. I'm an engineer, but it's, it doesn't look very good. I can picture it and it doesn't look very good. But um, it's not a major objection to me. It's just something I wanted to bring up if it's something you guys want to consider. Um, but I, I, like I said, I don't have any problems with the variances that have been asked for. I'd be, I'd be willing to make a decision tonight as well. Good. And I think the applicant mentioned they'd be agreeable to coming up with a design for that fence that's consistent with yeah, the yeah, neighborhood, so to speak. Didn't you, Paul, didn't you say something about <clears throat> you'd rather he'd rather even do a landscaping back there. Right. Harry, anything else from you? No, I'm fine. Okay. What? Landscaping in lieu of a no. 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 Questions? No questions. I'm prepared. Okay. 
So with that feedback, um, I'm also supportive of the application. I think I've watched that site sit underutilized for a number of years. Uh, it'd be good to get it back into production, create jobs for people that want to work. Uh, so you see the assessed valuation of the site go up a little bit. Uh, so I'm very supportive of the project. I think I'm ready to take a motion on this case. No. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Uh, based on the conditions in the staff report, uh, approval of the variances requested based on the staff report uh, with the conditions, additional conditions that the monument signs be brought back to the zoning commission for final review. We can, we can bring Some clarification. Go ahead. So procedurally, if the zoning commission wishes to separate out the signage, we can do that, but it would need to be reopened as, as a public yeah. hearing. Mm -hmm. um, as far as bringing back a landscaping plan, um, that also, we shouldn't close the hearing tonight. We should re request specific items to be brought back to the zoning. Well, actually, let me start over. So there are three options here. <laughs> the one option is to close the public hearing and make a decision tonight. Um, the second is to close the public hearing and specifically request uh, certain information, but no further testimony could be given at the next meeting. And then the third option is to continue the case, leave the public hearing portion open, and request specific information, but then that would also allow for additional testimony. Okay. So there's three different options. Uh, with this being a public hearing, if, if, if you wish to review additional material, the public hearing portion really needs to stay open. Okay. I mean, uh, the landscaping, I thought that would be left up to staff and, and based on zoning and requirements. We can do that. Okay. And that's what I was going to put as okay. a condition. Okay. okay. Okay, the signage is because it is a very, very gray area, and we are very concerned about signage along Beachmont. It'd be nice to see that back to the commission and separate that out as a new public hearing and application. Um, the other thing I thought, um, and I lost my train of thought, so sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Um, That would be my motion at this time, I believe. Okay. Okay. So. Go ahead and read back that motion. Yes, please. Did you have it? Uh, Mr. Gothard moved to approve case 1-2013-PD um, according to the findings in the staff report as well as uh, grant both variances and three variances in the staff report. Um, subject to the conditions found within the staff report as well as that the monument signs come back to Zoning Commission for review and that the landscaping plan be approved by staff. Okay. Yes. And just for the uh, Zoning Commission's, I guess, information, friendly amendments are permitted. So if there's anything that I think we <laughs> want to add to this. Yeah. I know, Rob, there was a, uh, I guess, a <coughs> remark about the vinyl sign or vinyl fencing. Uh, I mean, but that's part of landscaping solution? Yeah. I mean, I'm, okay. yeah. I mean I, it's not something that I necessarily need to see. I mean, it's just something I wanted to bring up and see if anyone shared the same concern. Okay. But it's not something I need so to have amended. Agreeable? Yeah. The last thing that just came back to me was that the dumpster enclosures be of the same material as the buildings. Okay. Um, okay. We have a motion. Any other friendly amendments? Yeah. I just have one. If it, just a question, if I may. Okay. In the past, on these mining, on the signage, we have really left it up to stay up. You know, to come back and and you know do to do this for us, so we didn't have to come back another time and have them have another public hearing and a motion to go through this whole whole thing again. Is that possible that you could change that that step? I mean, they haven't let us down yet. Number five, four years. So, can we change that? Could I make an amendment to his? No, the the motion was stamp? that it be brought back during the public hearing. Oh, yeah. you want it brought back to I us? Mean, we reopen the public hearing? Yes. I mean, the other present, I could modify that and say that as long as it falls within the zoning requirements and staff approves, I'm accepting with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah that there's no. I'm comfortable just letting staff, based on what I've heard tonight, right. yeah. on one of the questions that we asked, I'm comfortable with just letting staff okay. do that final okay. review of the sign. Good. I'm good as long as it meets the zoning requirements. All right. Okay. That's it. And it's consistent with what, yes. right. what we've done in the past. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's all I hear. Is that good? Yep. Good. A second? A second. Rob, second. Roll call. 
Mr. Gotham? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Hathcamp? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Get her bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no other items before the Zone Commission. We'll adjourn, we but did go just, ahead. Just a reminder that we did move the December meeting up a week to December the 16th. The 16th. And, um, and I was Christine iffy. will be here. You were iffy, so I don't I'm know out. if I'm out. out. Rob, you're right. Christine is here for Rob. Okay. And then we just need your answer soon so we can let Jay know. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll I'll motion second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. <laughs>